Hi there. Here's my nearly completed do-it-yourself version of a spot welder. Um, this is the only video I've published ever and I've decided to take my time to shoot it and put it online because I realized that I've taken so much valuable information on the spot welding topic from all the videos you guys have published on the web and I've also realized the amount of time I've saved myself uh, thanks to your publication. So uh, uh, once I've finished my project uh, I felt uh, bad to myself if I didn't share some of my work too so here I am on YouTube. So here's the baby almost finished. I'm not proud of the color. Uh, thing is that uh, I had a spare spray paint can that happened to be this color, so I used it to give the case a better finish than bare aluminum. The uh, handle here is uh, wood sandwiched and glued between two uh, aluminum sheets, and the thing is uh, uh, riveted on the top cover. Uh, the electrode are copper rods that I found at a meta shop. Um, this is almost the only thing I had to buy on purpose. Um, the extenders for the uh, electrodes are chrome-plated steel pipes that I cut from a spare cloth hanger. Um, top cover is a, uh, a spare uh, part it's it's an old aluminum rectangular oven cake pan that my wife set aside for good uh, the body is a steel sheet that came from a long ceiling neon lamp <coughs> enclosure which I cut with a grinder and the two sides uh, this one here and this one there are uh, aluminum leftovers from the cake pan uh, the whole structure is uh, held together with rivets and uh, uh, the top cover can be removed since it's fixed with uh, screws so basically the whole enclosure uh, material has come at no cost. So here you can see the uh, manual trigger switch this one here um, to start a welding pulse. Uh, the electrode uh, handle here, uh, see, uh, to push the two electrodes one against the other. Uh, here's the display and the buttons for. Uh, okay, these stickers are numbers that I put there for uh, debugging functions. Um, the display and the buttons are used to choose the welding parameters. Uh, still have to make a small enclosure for the display itself. reason why I haven't fixed it from underneath is that it wouldn't fit inside because the space was not enough. Uh, here you have the mains plug, uh, fuse and switch. Uh, also scavenged from scrap desktop species uh, and uh, here in front uh, right here I have a plug to connect a pedal switch uh, which I haven't done yet uh, here you can see one of the two high current cables the other one of course runs from uh, the inside now let me switch it on so you can see a couple of setups. Okay, let me turn it on. Here, uh, hope you can see it. Uh, I, I first choose the power level in 10% uh, increments. Um, this power level would be applied to all welding modes that will be selected afterwards. Uh, now the power is set at 50%. Uh, I can, uh, of course, modify it, 60, 70, back to 50, whatever. Um, 
then uh, the second menu lets me choose between manual and uh, preset welding let me move to the second menu here if you can see it you can uh, uh, go uh, between manual and preset uh, in manual mode the welder is turned on and off exactly when I push and release the weld switch and uh, this mode can be used to experiment on uh, scrap metal before you go on and weld what you actually need to weld uh, this prevents me from blowing off the first three or four pieces I'm working on before I find a good compromise power and pulse length uh, so uh, we, uh, let us go for manual mode okay now it's ready for manual mode if I press the weld switch and release it as you can see the interesting thing here is that it records and displays the exact time um, I have taken for my manual weld cycle and this is good for me to have a precise reference once I have determined the best weld timing for uh, that particular uh, material or object for instance uh, the try I've done uh, so far uh, lasted uh, 500 milliseconds let me do it again quicker one 240 milliseconds okay now let's go back to the choice menu and let's choose preset mode there we go preset preset mode uh, here I can pre-select the length of the welding pulse in milliseconds then if I move further on it gets ready and I move further on okay ready preset it gets ready waiting for me to push the weld switch interesting here is that when I press the weld switch here you can hear the noise uh, it applies the exact welding pulse length no matter how long I take to release the switch in other words the welding pulse takes always exactly the amount of time I have selected for this weld cycle this is very good for particularly thin sheets or a small diameter of steel wires and rods um, well this is basically it um, couldn't think of any more fancy functions to be added maybe some others will come to my mind after having used the welder for a while um, oh I forgot uh, I can also specify a delayed pulse uh, with delays from 1 to 10 seconds uh, when you select delay pulse let's see yeah 1 2 3 seconds and go back when you select the late pulse the welding is not initiated immediately when I push the weld switch but only after the selected delay period has expired um, I guess it, this could uh, come handy when I need both hands to uh, hold together the pieces to weld and I have no pedal switch here weld one two three welding uh, maybe it's a bit of an overkill function don't know but uh, hey it only took me what five ten minutes to add and debug this extra feature into the program so uh, I just did it okay now let me show you what's inside the thing um, this one of course is the uh, peak programming cable which I left out for um, ease of programming um, let me take the screws out now it's open and I set the uh, top cover and electrode apart uh, inside you can see the two microwave transformers here and you can see the power supply plus 5 volts for the logic and plus 12 volts for the heatsink fan uh, here's the controller PCB uh, with the heatsink for the triac 
and then you have all the connectors for the display uh, the connector for the buttons which are here uh, the connector for the switch and the remote switch uh, etc okay so the first comment is about the way I have uh, uh, wired the secondary of the two microwave transformers um, I know it's uh, uh, hard to see because uh, I have poured some hot glue on the secondary wires to prevent them from vibrating when powered but in a nutshell what I've done is uh, I have run two loops uh, of the secondary with each loop going through both the transformers you can see comes uh, each wire each thick wire comes out of one transformer and straight into the other it reverses goes back in out again from this transformer and into the other one out and in again for for two loops um, this way I've obtained the same effect as if I had connected two separate secondaries in series um, this layout has a few advantages uh, first is that <clears throat> you don't have to make connections to join two separate secondaries in series uh, you run the same wire through both transformers and, and you're done uh, another advantage is that with this layout you can keep the two transformers uh, as close uh, as possible as close as you like in order to save space and keep the secondary wire as short as possible and finally uh, wiring the secondary this way you will uh, end up with both ends of the secondary wire coming out from the same side of one transformer which is good because it will be easier to connect the two electrodes now let me take out the controller PCB so that you can uh, take a closer look at it okay it's out now here's the controller PCB it's a microchip PIC16F88 base circuit I don't know if you can see the, uh, the PIC there it's surface mount, surface mount and it drives a zero voltage switching optocoupler photo triac uh, which is this little device there um, <clears throat> which ensures the galvanic installation of the logic circuitry from the mains and drives the gate uh, here and drives the gate of the power triac. Uh, the power triac is a BTA41800 BRG from ST Micro, which can draw, which can withstand uh, 800 volts at 40 amps RMS. When I measured the current drawn by the transformers from the mains um, at full load, I read about 20 amps RMS. So uh, this triac should be okay. Uh, I run my welder at uh, 220 volts, but if your transformers have uh, 110 volts primaries, you have the choice of wiring the primaries in series and still work at uh, 220 volts uh, mains voltage, keeping the same triac, or if you are somehow bound to use 110 volts, then you might want to consider an IGBT as the main switcher instead of the track um, I'd still recommend to go for zero voltage switching valve now um, this little daughter board you see sitting on top of the controller PCB is a zero crossing detector uh, which I realized at a later time that I had to add this extra function into my circuit while I, while I was uh, testing the controller with the transformers and I will come back on these uh, in a minute. Um, here's the Triac heat sink. It's copper uh, with the integrated uh, 12 volts fan. Uh, I have scavenged this from an old laptop. Um, you see that the fan is blowing air through the heat sink and away towards the uh, venting uh, holes of the enclosure.